Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. Today I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of being on the offensive side of the ball in NBA 2K15. Let's hop right into it. Alright, so the first con on this list will be the new animations that they've put into the game this year. Now, I'm going to talk about full-blown, like, all the animations I've seen. Now, NBA 2K has said that they've added just under 6,000 new animations. So, to make it feel more realistic, like simulation basketball, like things you would see in the NBA, they have added these animations. But, what's wrong is it will now be like an animation-based game. So, as an offensive player, you kind of have a little bit of freedom, but if you get caught in an animation, you're like, what do I do next, dude? Like, if you get bumped from, you know, somebody trying to take a charge cheese, and you're like, okay, now I just got bumped. I'm still, you know, forward progress, but off to the side a little bit. Now that my player is kind of out of the play because he decided to take a charge, do I take the shot? That's the type of decision that you have to make. Now, uh, let's talk about layups. Um, layup animations are pretty good. Um, just that, you know, if a player falls down and, you know, he starts complaining to the ref, um, another team can kind of, like, take the ball out. You know, even though, like, sometimes players, they play without cutscenes, like, online. So that will kind of hurt them because, you know, the player would be complaining, but the other team would be trying to, you know, get it back on a fast break. Um, animations for dunking. Now, these aren't, like, big cons they're more like you know you kind of got to pick your battles we all know that you know a lot of players got sucked into defense last year and there are still times where players get sucked in a little bit i'll talk about that on on the defensive side but when you're going up for a dunk right and you know you're like yo i'm about to posterize this dude what will happen is if that player is too far out you know for the for from the gather he will literally lose the ball you know, Sprite, um, the ball will hit the back of the cylinder. Um, sometimes like he'll, it, it, it's, 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 it's bad, but it's good. And, and the reason why I say this is as an offensive player, you know, you do want to score every single time, but you kind of have to make it more realistic. So when a player goes up, like for instance, Zach Levine, right? I was playing up against Mike Howard. Um, and, he basically put Zach Levine in at the starting spot for the Timberwolves, and he said, yo, I'm going to kill you with him. Just watch. He literally jumped over Hollis Thompson. No lie. It was the computer, but it was cool. He jumped over Hollis Thompson. He posterized a few guys, but there were those few times where he would gather. It might be two people in the paint. He sprited. Um, he lost the ball over the other side of the rim. He tried to posterize, like, coming straight up the middle and hit the back of the cylinder, losing the ball. So there's not, like, you know, that all, I'm going to always posterize you feel. So that I know that's, like, not, like, a big con but that's a con to let you know that you will not be just dunking on everybody this year you know and um i'll talk more about badges and everything uh in a, in a couple new videos that i'll be um coming out with basically um i can say that badges is something for the future and i'll tell you more about that soon but uh let's hop into the next con on this list All right, so a con for NBA 2K15 is definitely the new shot meter. And this is why I say this. A lot of players, I'm talking about gamers, that play this game will probably key in on that shot meter so freaking much. And you want to know why? Because they're going to want to get a perfect release every time, and that's not going to be the case. So what I can tell you is, if you have the shot meter on, take it off. This is why. As a player, I'm somebody that looks at jump shots. You know, I look at when the, the ball is released from the wrist, how high he is, what, how, how long it takes for him to release the ball, all of that. When I got to play NBA 2K15, guess, what, guess where my eyes were for every single shot? It was keyed in on a god darn shot meter at his feet. You want to know why? Because I wanted to get a perfect release, and I'm sitting here timing a bar that moves from yellow to the center 
and then if it goes green or if it's a little bit space afterwards and I'm trying to key in the perfect timing for this jump shot by a shot meter man it was so so confusing because I'm like yo this is not the type of play style that I play I play looking at a real jump shot not at a meter so I'm gonna tell you now if you like looking at your jump shot and you have great timing that way turn off the shot meter because it is going to draw you in like every time now I can say that a little pro about the shot meter is when you miss like or make it it will tell you feedback on the shot meter so if you're running down the other end of the court after missing it it'll tell you if you know you were in a red if you were in a yellow if it was green if it was slightly late slightly early it tells you all of that without words but i'm telling you now it will draw you in so that is like a con for me personally and i know it's going to be a con for a lot of gamers out there because it will it will confuse you it will distract you it will just uh mm. but let's hop into the next topic Now, a big con for NBA 2K15 for players that have been playing 2K for a long time is patience. You will really need a lot of patience this year. You will literally use up to 15 to 22 seconds of your shot clock this year. And this is why I say that the spacing, defense, you know, uh, the stamina, the shot meter, everything coincides with trying to play actual simulation basketball. So for a casual gamer to come in and, you know, say, I'm going to kill somebody, you know, I'm going to score 50 with one player. It's going to be pretty hard to do that this year. Um, trust, trust and believe. I've tried it. Um, there's only a few players that I play with that can actually like put up big points on a board. But I had to do it in a fashion where I'll call it isolation. Um, I'll have to beat that defender while he's playing on ball defense. If it was a computer, I have to run real pick and rolls, have players cutting to the basket. Like I'm playing real basketball instead of like going off with one player, you know. So I'm going to tell you now, you're going to need patience. It's key. Let's hop into the next topic. Now, a big con on NBA 2K15 is a three-point game. Now, this is why I say that a lot of players are known for beating their defender and then taking a three point shot. So if you don't have a high three point rating or even a high rating such as uh, what is it called? It's like uh, like spot up or moving like this year is going to be totally different from NBA 2K14. There's not going to be just one three point rating. There's actually going to be two three point ratings broken up into if you're a good three point shooter off the dribble or if you're a good three point shooter standing alone. So I'm telling you now, you might want to raise both of those. And even then. If you're beating your defender and you're like wasting a lot of stamina, your shot meter goes down because of you depleting your stamina. So you really want to make sure that you know a jump shot and make sure it's pure, make sure it's cash, and just make sure you have great timing. Because I'm going to tell you now, there were times where people pass it over to a guy that's wide open and we were playing, even though, you know, we were labbing and, you know, these might not be our favorite teams, man. Dudes were out here missing bad. I've seen air balls. I've seen a ball hit the front of the rim. That's how crazy it's going to be this year, man. So you definitely want to invest in a good three-point rating um, and everything like that. But um, I'm going to tell you now, there are a few players that, you know, still shoot good threes. Um, James Harden shoots a pretty good three-point shot. Um, who else? Mike Dunleavy shoots a good three-point shot. You know, there there are those guys that shoot good threes, but, you know, you want to have impeccable time and you want to make sure you're open, your stamina is good, you know. Just do what you need to do to hit them threes. Let's hop into the next topic. All right, so the last topic of the day is going to be the double team. Now, um, the reason that this is a con is because now... I remember I told you guys about the animations in the first con. As an animation, when a double team is coming, your player kind of reacts as another player is running up to him. So if there's a player pressing you and another player kind of runs up, guess what your player does? He kind of moves into a motion like, oh, man, a double team is coming. Now, 
The reason that this is a con is because as a player, you want to be like, oh, well, maybe I could beat this defender before the other player comes. That's not the case. You really get sucked in a little bit. And you got to make a decision if you want to pass it or if you want to try to run out of it, if you want to spin out of it once the other player is there. Now, NBA 2K14 had a little bit of that, but this year they've actually toned it a whole lot more, added new animations into it. So, you know, you're definitely going to have to play basketball a whole lot more. So if a double team is coming and you see it, you definitely want to back up. But make sure that you don't pass the back um, the half court line because it will be a back court violation on you because you decided to back up 100 different times. So definitely, you know, back up, create a little bit more space, get the ball out. Don't try to force it into the paint just because you see a player cutting. There are still going to be other guys on defense looking, rotating and helping out. Now, uh, this is IKC signing out. I hope you guys like the pros and the cons of the offensive side of the ball. The offensive side of the ball is definitely something that a lot of people key on, but I will be making a video about the defensive side of the ball shortly, and I hope you guys check that out as well. Um, subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment on your thoughts. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section as well. This is IKC signing out. I'm going to be talking about NBA 2K15 until launch, and I hope you guys are going to be with me the whole way. Peace out, guys. Yeah.